Today we're conducting a single dog trial that is part of a large three-year study. The premise of the three-year study is looking at how dogs generalize to similar odors and discriminate amongst different odors. This particular test is actually a little bit, a little bit different in that it's looking at if, uh, how dogs train to different odor levels. So if you train the dog at the same amount of odor, how does it, re how does it generalize or discriminate from larger and lower quantities? Our canine participants are from the National Association of Canine Scentworks, which is a, a hobby group. Um, we also have volunteers from Wilson High School, so we have uh, students from the robotics team that are here helping us today, as well as some of uh, NRL's summer interns, and then our collaborators from Florida International University. So the students here are not just being brought as volunteers, but we wanted them to really get something out of it. So not just watching the trials and um, running papers around for us. So we brought them in an hour early and taught them a class on experimental design. We then gave them the premise of the study and let them make up their own experimental design. And then we went and told them how we're running this study and compared it to what they came up with. The objective of all of my trials, not just this one, but the whole study is to improve how uh, we train our detection dogs. So we are using hobby dogs, but what we're trying to do is gain knowledge that will help all types of detection dogs, uh, be it narcotics or explosives or accelerants or any, anything like that. We're here so they don't have to use in-service dogs because they're introducing odors that aren't necessarily going to be one of their trained odors, so we can come out here and add whatever odors with very little issues going forward with our trials or with, with nose work. So that's why we're here doing this as, as pet dog handlers. What we would like to see from this event is an obvious relationship between um, how a dog is trained and how it performs. The Navy, other military, and law enforcement rely very heavily on canine detectors. They continue to be um, often better than any other field instrumental detectors we have. So improving that already um, important detector can really help save lives. I think, I think everybody enjoys being a part of this just because it's, it's so cool. You know, you can get out there and work, work with the DOD people and the science of it. There's a lot of science people over there. That, that really enjoy that science and, and understanding more. And I think with what Lauren has, has done, she gave us a briefing on, on the odor molecules and what, what it all means. And for some of, some of my handlers, they really got a lot out of that and understand more about what their dog's doing. For my work in general, I think it's really important that science and detection are working together. So we have uh, military and police that use these dogs, and we have scientists of all different sorts that study them, and I think it's really important to work together to end up with the best detector. I love this job. I could not possibly ask for a better research subject. It is fascinating because the dogs don't talk, so you have to really try hard to figure out what it is they're doing and why, and it gets to involve chemistry all at the same time, so you've got multiple disciplines working together, and it's fascinating and really fun.